What is up? What is going on, Dave at SVA Card Collectors? And wee some big baseball news as the Astros have finally been penalized for their tomfoolery. Yes, tomfoolery, I say. Now, being a Yankee fan, as everyone knows, I am a little bit more critical of them because they beat my team who didn't hit in clutch situations, and that's really why they lost and not because of the signs being stolen. But I will say this. In that 2017 season, there was a stark difference between the Astros um, playing at home and playing away. Um, Yankees played the Astros tight at home, uh, at the whatever the hell that that state minute may. I don't know what the name of the stadium is called at uh, Houston, um, but they played them pretty close. It was tight with the other way around. Houston against a, a Yankee stadium, they were shook. They were shook, and I'm telling you, if they would have played. If it was flip-flopped, um, the home field advantage, it would have been over, Johnny. The Yankees would have won because they just had them shook. They just couldn't, whatever it was against Yankee Stadium in that year, 2017, they were shook. Um, but, but, that is a lot of BS. I think, personally, and everyone go, well, the Yankees had the steroids. Yeah. I don't care about no steroids. Football players do steroids all the time. They get a slap on the wrist. No one says boo about it. Oh, they won the Super Bowl. But they had steroids for four games. No one says anything. So I don't want to hear that. I really don't. I don't care about it. Um, You could say the one year we had our best player, and A-Rod was awesome that year, where we won, I think it was 2010. I forget the years, man. But the latest one, the Yankees, when they won the World Series, I can say, all right, yeah, you have an argument. You know, our best player, he was probably roided up or whatever the hell it was. I don't think it was roids. I think it was, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the hell they use. I, I don't follow it that often because I really don't care. Um, but the ones previously, outside of Roger Clemens, and Roger Clemens was doing it in the Toronto days, Pettit wasn't doing it. He did it, again, at Houston so he can um, recover from his injury faster. And then it was Chuck Knobloch and uh, a couple of guys, uh, Graham Lloyd or some nonsense. It was a bunch of bullpen guys. If you were to say Jerry Jeter, Bernie Williams, Paul O'Neill, like guys like that, then you'd have a case. But even still, I, I really don't want to hear it because it, they, at least they weren't cheating the game as in stealing some. Now, whatever, I, I think it, that's a bunch of malarkey. That's, that's all I have to say. Um, but the fact that they use technology to steal signs and then had a system to convey it to the players and one, the players weren't penalized. This isn't little league. It's not like, well, the, the parents, it was like the parents made them do it. So you can't penalize them. Are you kidding me? The, all of them should be banned, not banned, but, uh, not banned for life or anything like that. They should be penalized. They should be for a year or six months or something. It wasn't like it was one time or it was like a week or something like that. It was the entire season and it was the playoffs where they won the World Series. And you're basically going, well, well, we got, so we'll suspend the coach and the GM because um, they knew and um, for a year. And then the Astros guy said, you're fired. And you lose your first and second round picks. Big whoop. Like, seriously. That was a terrible, terrible, like, Major League Baseball, I think, dropped the ball. Now, if it was the Yankees, I'd probably be like, oh, this is too harsh. But I, 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 I don't think so. I, I, I don't think it was harsh. I think it was light, to be honest with you. Because, really, 
the people that it really it's supposed to affect is the players, and they weren't affected at all. Nothing happens. They have their World Series ring. They're not suspended. Whatever. Carlos Beltran was the only one named, and of course the dumb Mets had to hire him as a manager. Just, just as a Met fan, no. Taken as a Jet fan, it's the same thing. Whatever move you make is the wrong and the dumb one. Even when picking managers, you pick the wrong guy. Now, he may be a great manager and all that, but right off the bat, this guy has, like, issues. And everyone loves him. Everyone's always a nice guy. He's a great guy, great baseball guy, and all that good stuff. All the players love him, and it still could be the case. This has nothing to do with a you know, person's, uh, you know, who he is as a person. Well, may, maybe, because they cheated, but I don't think he's a terrible person. I don't think he, you know is as bad as like the domestic violence um, stuff and, and things like that. Not the totally separate thing. But I, I, I'm meandering a little bit. I, what I'm trying to say is he's a good person, but with this whole scandal, it just makes you question maybe there's some things hidden about him. Um, you know, maybe he's got some concealed naughtiness. And the next guy who's going to get it is Alex Cora from the Red Sox. They're saying there's some tomfoolery afoot as well. But I didn't see the Red Sox knocking on nothing. Knock, knock, knocking on. So I think they got off light. I think it should have been way worse. Way worse. And I think, I really do think the World Series should be vacated. No one won that year. That's what I'd say. They can't put the pennant up. They can't do nothing. If it was something that the players were going, well, how are they getting this data? And the coach and the GM or whatever, and the GM's going, no, nah, don't worry about it. We got this data. We did some, you know, some scouting, whatever. And then later it's found out that they were doing something, lo- you know, they were stealing signs and, and, and doing that stuff. That's one thing. If you're banging on trash cans to tell you, if a pitch is going to be a change-up or not, that is a problem. That is a massive problem. And the fact that they were doing it for the entire year, and the fact that the players knew who were going against them, knew. And Major League Baseball just goes, eh, your coaches, because you didn't read the memo. You don't need to read a memo to know that you can't do that. It's just idiotic. It's just stupid. Ugh. That's all I got to say about that. I, I, I'm... I am annoyed about it because I think it should have been way harsher. And it should have been harsher on anyone. If it was the Yankees, the same thing. Uh, I'm sorry. It, for you to cheat the game like that, that's a big deal. I think it's as big, if not bigger, than um, the World Series. Um, them gambling on the World Series, the Black Sox or the White Sox or whoever the hell Sox they got. Um, like, yeah, they gambled on the World Series and, uh, you know, they were throwing the games. But it was one series. It wasn't the entire season that they were cheating. <sighs> but I digress. All right. All right. Okay. So, I wanted to get into a little bit about 1956 Topps cards. Now, these were always my... I wouldn't say my... I wouldn't say my all-time favorites, but I really, really like these cards. I think my all-time favorite is the 1953 Topps Mickey Mantle. That's that style. I always like that more than the 1952 Topps. Um, and I did like the 55. The only thing, it looked like Mickey Mantle had like gigantic lips. So I wasn't a huge fan of this set like uh, for Mickey Mantle, but I did like the other players. Now, this is me thinking back in the day. Um, Because I like the action shot that they had, the picture. um, And I just like the cards. Um, It wasn't as... I like the 1955 tops probably the best. It was between them and 53. Yeah, no. Have a real loud truck right next to me. That's great. Thanks. And um, those were my favorite. 53 tops is my favorite. Um, But... And 55 seemed like a more elegant version of uh, 56. But <coughs> 56 is the, like the last, not the last, but it's a, Dave, you're just meandering all over the place. I'm losing you people. The size of the card is three and three quarters inch by two and five eighths 
typical size is two and a half by three and a half. So they were slightly bigger. The set had 340 cards. They are over 200 variations, and I think there's more than that. The first 180 cards, you have a gray back and a white back. Um, there's really no premium in either one from what I gather. Maybe some cards more or less based upon PSA Pop. Um, and that, I'm not going to go into to that stuff. You can head over to PSA Card and check out the population reports on, on them. Um, but it's not a incredibly expensive um, set because there's really not that many big rookies. Actually, there's only one. It's uh, Louis Aparicio is the only Hall of Fame rookie out of, out of this set. And so, uh, you know, 55, you had a lot more. You had Koufax, Clemente, uh, K-Line. I think I'm missing uh, another guy. What's that? Losing it. Losing it! I was going to say, no, it's not Matthews. Matthews is 52. Um, I don't know. I can't think of, of the other guy. I think there's, another, there's one more. But I say Koufax, right? I don't know. Again, meandering. Keep moving forward. So, and the cards 181 to 340 are a little bit harder to get um, in better condition. Nothing crazy. Not like the 52 set. Um, but... There is also the team cards. And the team cards <clears throat> have the, there's like five different variations of them. One has the, the name of the team centered. Then they have one where the name's at the left. And then you have one where it's dated. And with the name centered and the name at the left, you also have it in the gray and white background. So you basically have, if you're looking for a master set, and the master set is like every single thing, every little variation you can get of the set it starts to add up pretty quickly. So you're adding 340 plus 200, which is 540, and you probably got a couple of other ones that they really didn't mention. Um, <clears throat> you have some that have um, a line, a different color line above the name of the player in some cards. Um, great resource to go to is Net54. I would head over there. Um, and take a look at it. You can also type in 1956 tops variations, and there was a website that had most, not all of them though, because they didn't have the variations with the names on top. But it gives you a good, um, good starting point <clears throat> for all this stuff. Now I've been—I I don't know if I've mentioned this before. I am more inclined to start getting commons in their raw form instead of getting them graded because it is a pretty expensive endeavor for any vintage set to get them all graded right off the bat. Um, try to find the best raw card you can and then try to get them graded later. You probably save yourself some bucks and, um, <coughs> excuse me, I think that's the, the way to go. Um, you have the most, I think there's 34 Hall of Famers and you now have Mickey Mantle in this set where he wasn't in 54 and 55 because he was with Bowman. And so, I don't know, like that. As soon as I do that, it knocks me off my train, train of thought. But that's his, that's his you know, his, uh, I don't know. I, that's like the next card that everyone likes to get. You have to 52, 53 people go crazy about. 55 is like, and then I think 58 is like the next like really popular card. Um, 57, I don't know. I don't know if it's so much, 57. But anyway, I'm, again, meandering and talking nonsense. Um, so all these cards, you can pick them up for PSA 5. For, for the most part. Now, I, what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back a little bit. Sorry, I had notes on here, and I'm driving. Who can read notes when they're driving? So the, you have Ted Williams, Henry Aaron, Willie Mays, Jackie Robinson, Ernie Banks, and Al Kalon. And Tops, you think they're lazy now. Back then, they used the same portrait from 1954 to 1956. Three years, same damn portrait. So, but this year you got the action shot and a lot of it, which was a little bit different, was them uh, base running. There's a lot of base running, them sliding and things like that. So 
these cards, you can pick them up in a PSA 5 or a PSA 6. PSA 6, they start coming up. They start going to three, 400, some of them. But you probably can get PSA 5s in a lot of them for 200 to, two to 300, depending on the centering and the whole nine yards. Um, so it's not a crazy, crazy, crazy expensive uh, set to get with regards to getting the, the star cards. Um, I don't know, Henry Aaron you can get for less than 200 in some cases. Um, so I, I think this is a nice set. It's an older set, so you're still getting, you know, these are still, you know, second or third year cards of uh, major stars. Um, and they just look really nice. They're, they're just really nice looking cards. You can get them. They're available. There's nothing like too overly rare that you can't find them anywhere. You can go to, you know, card shows and there's always 56 there. Um, oh, lowered the window for some reason. Um, the one glaring omission is uh, no uh, Frank Robinson, which I believe he won Rookie of the Year. So he's the only guy that's not there. Um... But again, if you like collecting a crap load of cards to get a master set, this is a good set to get. And I think this will definitely appreciate in value as well. Um, they're just nice looking cards. Dave, you said that like eight times already. I know. Um, so that's that with the 56 tops. I might throw a thread on Flick Chat on the 56, and that's what I'll do for each week. Um, if you got, I'll post like links of where I got most of my information from. Um, if guys are actually buying it and they're looking to get stuff, we can throw that stuff in there as well. Um, and we'll do that each week. I don't know too many people trying to go after last week's the 52 top set. Um, that's a crazy expensive set. And um, get that Mickey Mantle is going to be a little rough. But... It is doable. It is doable. Um, so, svacardcollectors.com. Let's download. Let's 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 download the FlickChat app. And also, I will be doing my uh, Facebook live this Wednesday at nine o'clock. Come join the fun. Um, we will do the Blue Jeans app, and I may switch it. Um, I have to do a test run to Facebook Live in my... I have a page for the... I had to create a page so I can... Um, for, for, the, for my show, for the SVA card collectors, there's a page and then there's a group. That page is where I want to do the live because then people don't have to join my group to, to see the show. They can just hop right in. Um, the only thing is people can't, I can't do, I can only get one other person in, and so that's where I'll probably do uh, special guests, um, I already have one lined up in February, which I think people will be happy about, maybe not, I don't know, who knows, um, but um, I will be looking to get other people there, and so it will be easier for me just to have another person there, we could talk about a topic, and then we, I can open it up to questions. Um, and also, maybe we can do the Blue Jeans app as well. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. I don't know what we're doing here. But again, as I was saying before, please, if you guys can help me out, click the, those affiliate links so I can get some money in so I can buy cards and then give them away. That's all really it's, it's for. I'm not looking to make money here. Unless it's thousands of dollars, then I will say, screw you guys. Um, and um, I will retire to the Boca Raton. I think that's the best space, place to, to retire. Um, but if you could do that, that would really help me out so I can buy some boxes, I can pre-sale, I can, I can buy stuff a little bit cheaper, and then I can, give them, I can open them up and give them away, um, whatever cards that are there. And um, that's, that's about it, guys, all right? You guys know what to do. Bicycle cards and go broke. Later.